Thank you, Senator Sheldon. The time for two-minute statements has expired. I'm going to question time and calling Senator Bragg. Thanks very much, Madam President. Uh, my question is to the Minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Farrell. I welcome the statements made by both, both Minister Farrell and the Finance Minister this week in relation to Stage 3 tax cuts. That, quote, the policy we took to the election was that those tax cuts remain and our position has not changed. End quote. Can the minister outline to the Senate why the Albanese Labor government is so committed to implementing stage three tax cuts uh, that will cut taxes for hardworking Australians? Thank you, Senator Bragg. Uh, minister Farrell. Um, thank you, uh, thank you uh, President, and uh, thank, uh, thank uh, Senator Bragg for his, uh, his question. Well, <clears throat> I suppose the simple answer um, and the most uh, direct uh, answer um, to, your, to your question um, is that um, uh, this issue was discussed um, in the uh, shadow cabinet before the, uh, the last election. Um, <clears throat> there was debate about um, uh, whether we would originally support or oppose um, the tax cuts. Of course, um, we took a decision as a shadow cabinet uh, to uh, support the tax cuts, um, and uh, we took that uh, position to the last election. Um, and uh, <coughs> Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is nothing if he's not a person who honours his commitments. And so he he took he 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 took he took he took he, he took that policy. Order. I'm right about that, aren't I, my colleagues? He's a man. He, he's a man. He's a man. He's a man of his words. No, they weren't looking worried. They're all happy. They're looking very happy. They're looking happy because it's Friday. It's the end of the week. Thank God it's Friday. We can uh, get out of here. We hope. Um, but look at all those happy faces, and and like me, they know that um, Prime Minister um, Albanese is a man of his words. Uh, and uh, he took that policy uh, to, the, uh, to the Australian people, just as he's doing in a whole range of other areas like childcare, aged care, you name it, you name it, in putting um, electricity, putting downward pressure on cost of living, of course. Uh, he's, um, Thank you, Minister he's... Farrell. The time for answering has expired. Senator Bragg, first supplementary. Thanks very much, Minister. Uh, can the minister explain how the implementation of stage three tax cuts will help address increasing rates of bracket creep? Minister Farrell. Thank you, President, and uh, th thank uh, Senator Bragg uh, once again for his, uh, his question. Um, I guess it's pretty obvious that after 10 years, 10 years of neglect in this uh, area from the uh, from the, then, uh, th from the then government, of course, um, this issue of, uh, of bracket creep uh, continues to be a matter of concern for um, Australian uh, taxpayers. Um, like everything that the Prime Minister does, he's all about looking after um, Australian, uh, Australian uh, workers uh, and, of course, um, in the same way that he's putting downward pressure on electricity prices, helping people with their childcare costs, assisting uh, aged care uh, workers, uh, this Prime Minister is committed to looking after Australians, uh, making their life easier, not harder, easier, not harder. Uh, and, uh, Thank that's... you, Minister Farrell. The time for answering has expired. Senator Bragg, second supplementary. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, Minister. How will your commitment to stage three tax cuts help Australians to keep more of what they earn? Minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, President, and uh, thank you, um, uh, Senator Bragg, for his, uh, his uh, second uh, supplementary uh, uh, question. Well, it is rather <coughs> self-evident, I would have thought, uh, uh, that uh, if um, uh, an Australian taxpayer receives a uh, tax cut, um, then it's rather implicit in that then that they keep more of the money than uh, they earn. I, I do find it difficult to understand why you would um, have difficulty with that uh, concept. I, um, I certainly don't. Um, and uh, 
So um, when a person uh, who's on a particular rate of uh, tax uh, gets that uh, tax uh, rate uh, reduced, of course, that gives them more disposable uh, income. Uh, and uh, surely, surely, uh, Senator, you understand uh, that. Uh, you know, I can see you're smiling. Uh, because uh, an acknowledging Thank you, Minister, that the time for answering has expired, Senator Grogan. My question is to the Minister representing the Minister for Indigenous Australians, Senator Gallia. A voice to Parliament will give Indigenous communities a route to help inform policy and legal decisions that impact their lives. We heard yesterday that the wording of the referendum question relating to changing the constitution has been resolved, which is great news. How is the government progressing its commitment to enshrine an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to parliament? Thank you, Senator Grogan. Minister Gallagher. Uh, thank you, President. I thank Senator Grogan uh, for her question and her advocacy in relation uh, to support for uh, constitutional change and a voice to parliament. Yesterday was a truly historic day when the country took a big step forward on the journey to constitutional recognition for First Nations Australian through a voice to parliament. The Prime Minister, together with me members of the referendum working group, announced the wording of the constitutional amendment and the question that will be put to the Australian people at a referendum later this year. That question is a proposed law to alter the constitution to recognise the First Peoples of Australia by establishing an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice. Do you approve this proposed alteration? This is a straightforward question and one we believe will get the support of the majority of Australians at a referendum later this year. Because Australians understand that constitutional recognition through a voice is about two things, recognition and consultation. Recognition of the 65,000 years of shared history and continuous connection to this land by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. And consultation through voice, because listening to communities leads to better policies and better outcomes. The voice referendum is a unifying moment for Australia. It's about moving Australia forward for everybody. The Constitution Amendment Bill will be introduced to Parliament next week. There will be a parliamentary committee. This will provide an opportunity for further examination. It will also give all Australians a chance to make formal submissions on the proposed amendment and the question. Australians can have confidence that the amendment has been put under the microscope and stress test by the best legal minds in the country. The amendment is constitutionally sound and the Solicitor General has been fully involved in this process. Constitutional recognition has been discussed in this country for decades and it's an opportunity for Thank us you, Minister. The to time answer for that. Answering has expired. Like, Senator Grogan, first supplementary. Um, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes over quite a lengthy period of time to consider the voice to parliament and what it might look like. Um, can the minister detail the advice provided to the government from the referendum working group? Minister Gallagher. Uh, thank you, President. I thank Senator Grogan for the supplementary. The referendum working group it's made up of First Nations people from across the country who have been working on constitutional recognition for many, many years. People like Ken Wyatt, the former Liberal Minister, Professors Marcia Langton and Megan Davis, Noel Pearson, Pat Anderson, Thomas Mayo, Tom Carmer, Dale Aguis, Pat Turner and Tony McAvoy, amongst others. These are the First Nations representatives that the government has been listening to and taking advice from. And of course, this process has been chaired by Minister Linda Burney and the Special Envoy, Senator Dodson, as well as the Assistant Minister, Senator McCarthy. This has been a rigorous and comprehensive process. Some of the best legal minds in the country have been looking at this issue for several months now. People like the former High Court Judge, Justice Kenneth Hayne, his constitutional experts, Professor Toomey, Professor Williams and Cheryl Saunders. Australians can be confident that the work has been done to Thank ensure you, that this is a voice that works. The has expired. Senator Grogan, second supplementary. The gap has yet to be closed between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. In fact, under the last 10 years of the coalition, inequality has worsened. Uh, between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. Can the Minister explain how an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to parliament will improve the lives of Indigenous Australians? Thank you, Senator Grogan. Minister Gallagher. Uh, thank you, uh, President. I thank um, Senator Grogan for the supplementary. 
The life outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can and should be better, and I think we heard everyone at the press conference, that historic press conference yesterday, uh, express uh, those remarks. The gaps in life expectancy and educational outcomes are unacceptable, and a voice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians is a real chance to improve on these outcomes. It's perhaps and ever will have to sorry and the opportunity we have to address the injustices of the past and create change that will deliver a better future, a better future that will improve the lives of First Nations Australians on the ground in practical ways like health, education, and in housing. This isn't about more bureaucracy. This is about making sure voices in remote and regional communities are heard that the parliament is given that advice um, through First Nations voices so that we Thank can improve you, on the, the policies that support has First Nations. Senator Askew. Thank you. My question is to the minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Farrell. Earlier this week, we asked you how much electricity prices had gone up since the Albanese Labor government was elected, and reg regrettably, you were unable to answer it. Minister, in the intervening days, have you sought the answers? And if so, can you please inform the Senate how much electricity prices have gone up since the Albanese government was elected? Thank you, Senator Askew. Minister Farrell. Thank you, President. Uh, and I uh, thank the uh, <coughs> good Senator from Tasmania for her, uh, for her question. Um, look, I said in response to just about every question um, that you asked um, yesterday, um, <coughs> That um, you know, we're not going to get into this gotcha uh, moment uh, activity. Um, what? Um, um, Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Birmingham. What a president! It's hardly a gotcha moment when we're reciting the same question um, asked some days ago. Senator Birmingham, that's not a point of order. Minister Farrell, please continue. As um, you're always very helpful, Senator <coughs> Gallagher. Um, um, look, what I can say about what this government has done by comparison to what your government did, I mean, just, just, just remember this. When you pushed up the prices uh, of electricity just before the last election, instead of publicly telling people, instead of publicly telling people, telling the Australian public, telling all of those people up there in the, uh, in the audience, telling them that you'd pushed up the price of electricity. What did you do? You hid... Um, Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Askew. Um, it, relevance. The question was a very straightforward answer. A question that needs to be addressed. I'll just ask you to draw the minister back to the question. Um, the minister is reflecting on power prices, but I'll also remind him of the second part of your question, Minister Farrell. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, President, and thank you for that exhortation because it's highly relevant. It's highly relevant to um, the issue of electricity prices when your government failed to disclose to the Australian people weeks out from an election that you order. had pushed. Order. Order. Senator Gallagher, Minister Farrell, please continue. Thank, thank you, uh, President. And thank you for that protection from uh, <coughs> Senator Gallagher. Um, <laughs> if he wants the job, I'm sure. <coughs> and she'd do. Order. And she'd Order. do a very, very good job too. Um, uh, <coughs> no, that's that's not that's not fair, Senator McGrath. Um, no, I don't reckon. No. Um, uh, look, um, it's highly relevant to the circumstances when your government failed to disclose electricity uh, thank prices. Thank you, Minister Farrell. The time for answering has expired. Senator Askew, first supplementary. Thank you. Earlier this week, we asked you how much grocery prices had gone up since the Albanese Labor government was elected, and again, you were unable to answer it. Minister, in the intervening days, have you sought the answers? And if so, can you please inform the Senate how much groceries have gone up since the Albanese Labor government came, was elected? Thank you, Senator Askew. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, President, and uh, thank uh, Senator Askew for her, uh, her question. Um, as, I said, uh, as I said yesterday in uh, answer to uh, a not too dissimilar um, question, um, our Prime Minister wakes up, wakes up wakes up wakes up every day 
and thinks to himself, how can he assist uh, the Australian population in pushing downward pressure on the cost of living? Um, we did it in respect of um, electricity prices, of course, by introducing a cap on gas prices and coal prices, and that's pushed downward pressure on, uh, on uh, electricity prices. Of course, some of the beneficiary uh, that's pushed downward pressure on, pushed downward pressure, and of course, if you're a supermarket, if you're a supermarket that's um, using, Order. if you're, if, Order. Minister Farrell, look, what's continue. the point of asking? Um, Minister Farrell, please, please resume your seat. Order on my left. You have a senator on her feet. Second supplementary, Senator Thank Askew. You. Earlier this week, we asked you how much rental rates had gone up since the Albanese Labor government was elected, and once again, you were unable to answer. Minister, in the intervening days, have you sought the answers? And if so, can you please inform the Senate how much rental rates have gone up since the Albanese government was elected? Thank you. Um, Senator Askew, Minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, President, and thank uh, Senator Askew for her uh, second uh, supplementary uh, question. Um, the Albanese government understands quite clearly the sort of pressure that uh, people are under, uh, both in terms of uh, <coughs> rental, uh, rental costs uh, but also uh, mortgage costs. Um, um, we've seen uh, both of those rise. We, 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 we've seen both of those rise um, uh, in, in recent times. That's why the Albanese government has been uh, <coughs> so keen and working so hard to put downward pressure on all of the things um, that are um, causing uh, distress to, uh, to the Australian community. Um, and I've listed some, some things already. I've listed uh, childcare. We're uh, less than 100 days. Childcare costs in this country will go down. Doesn't, uh, Thank you, Minister. Uh, the time for answering has expired. Senator Barbara Pocock. My question is directed to Senator Farrell in his capacity representing the Minister for Resources. Nu nuclear submarines mean weapons-grade nuclear waste. Five Australian governments over 70 years have tried and failed to find a suitable place for the permanent storage of our existing low and intermediate level waste from medical and research activities. Even finding a site for low-level waste in our state of South Australia has met with very strong opposition from local communities and First Nations people. The AUKUS deal locks Australia into managing large quantities of weapons-grade waste, requiring military pr pr protection for more than 100,000 years. Neither the US nor the UK have moved beyond temporary storage of this material. Given no one on the planet has found a permanent solution, isn't it true that your government will also be unable to dispose of this dangerous waste and will simply kick the problem down the road to our kids decades ahead? Thank you, Senator Pocock. Minister Farrell. Um, thank, you, uh, thank, you, thank you, President, and uh, thank uh, Senator Pocock uh, for that question and her interest in this uh, particular uh, um, topic. Um, look, I guess the uh, short answer to um, your direct question is that uh, no decision has yet been made on the location for the disposal of uh, spent uh, nuclear fuel. Um, <clears throat> but by the... Um, well, let's look at South Australia. Um, um, there has been a proposal by the former government uh, in respect of uh, Kimber to deal with uh, low-level um, nuclear uh, nu nuclear waste, the sort of thing. The, th the thought. Well, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, no, okay. Well, I'm trying to answer your question, Senator Pocock, in the most honest way I can. You can at least give me the opportunity to complete the question. I sat in silence while you asked your question. I would appreciate the same courtesy. Um, while I'm giving you the answer, I'm pointing out that um, there is there is the issue of low-level nuclear waste. Um, the previous uh, government um, attempted to resolve that issue uh, in respect of um, uh, the, um, a site in Kimber in, in South Australia. Um, what the defence by the end of this year, um, defence in consultation with the Australian Radioactive Waste Agency, 
will complete a review to identify sites within the defence estate that could be technically suitable uh, for the storage and disposal of radioactive waste, including uh, spent uh, nuclear fuel. Uh, the process to identify... Well, Order. with respect, you've asked me the question. I'm directly answering your question. I mean, you might not, you might not like the answer, but Thank please... Thank you, Minister Farrell. The time for answering has expired. Senator Pocock, first supplementary. We're yet to hear an answer on how weapons grade, um, large quantities of weapons grade material are going to be stored. The South Australian Premier has called for the Bangala people to have a right to veto the low and intermediate level radioactive waste dump proposed on their country near Kimber in South Australia, as a proposal that the current Labor government has pursued, having had it suggested by the previous government. Any site for AUKUS nuclear waste will be on the lands of traditional owners. Will you commit now uh, to giving you, traditional Senator owners Pocock, any the future... The, the right to veto has expired. Um, Minister, Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, uh, 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 President, and um, I thank Senator Pocock for her uh, first uh, supplementary uh, question. I'm not entirely sure that you've correctly characterised um, the statements by the uh, South Australian uh, Premier, but I'll, I'll look uh, closely. I'll, I'll look closely. Um, I'll look closely at uh, what you, uh, you claim he uh, has said and uh, uh, find out exactly what it was that he did say in respect of uh, that particular site. But the process Order. to identify a suitable location for storage of high... Now, 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 now. Um, uh, the, pro the, process, the process to identify suitable location for storage. Thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Pocock, second supplementary. So, no promise of a veto for First Nations people. No voice. The AUKUS deal creates whole new challenges around nuclear waste, and the Bungala people, local Kimber farmers, and many other South Australians continue to unequivocally oppose a nuclear waste dump at Kimber, a site that is unsuitable for permanent storage of even intermediate level waste. In this light, will you commit to immediately suspend all preliminary works at Kimber and end your David and Goliath legal fights against the Bungala people? Uh, thank you. Uh, it's time. Um, Minister Farrell. Thank you, President, and uh, thank uh, Senator Pocock uh, for her uh, second uh, supplementary uh, question. Um, well, I can, I can certainly um, give you this uh, assurance, uh, Senator Pocock, that uh, uh, any spent fuel from uh, the uh, nuclear submarines will not be stored or disposed at the uh, uh, National uh, Radioactive Waste uh, Management Facility uh, at Kimber. Um, there are legal proceedings um, under, underway uh, in respect of um, uh, a dispute about um, the site at, uh, at Kimber. Um, I think in the circumstances that there are legal proceedings uh, underway, then generally speaking we don't comment on those particular proceedings and we allow those uh, proceedings to uh, uh, take their uh, their course and, of course, uh, abide by any um, decisions that might come out of those uh, proceedings. Thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Sheldon. My question is to the Minister representing the Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Local Government, Senator Watt. Commonwealth Government infrastructure investment has suffered from a decade of waste and rorts with funding decisions made for the purposes of issuing a media statements rather than actually delivering for the community, particularly in New South Wales. Of course, Mr Perrottet has flogged off roads, electricity, ports and housing for his mates on the cheap, and now he wants to privatise Sydney Water. Minister, I have, how has the Australian government cleaned up the mess in infrastructure investment to focus on delivering the projects that really matter to Australians? Thank you, Senator Sheldon. Minister Watt. Thank you, President. Thank you, Senator Sheldon, a very long-term advocate for transport infrastructure in New South Wales. Before answering Senator Sheldon, can I give a shout out to those in the public gallery? I can only imagine the joy you felt when you arrived here today and found out 
that House of Reps question time wasn't on uh, and that instead you'd be coming to the Senate. So we'll do our best to, to provide you with some relief. The Albanese government is committed to delivering the infrastructure projects that grow productivity, create jobs and build a better life for Australians across our country. That is why we are reinvigorating Infrastructure Australia and are partnering with states, territories and local governments to invest Senator in new projects that will deliver the greatest Senator benefits Rennie. to people across Australia. Over the last decade, unfortunately, our nation saw the infrastructure portfolio rorted by the Liberals and Nationals to pork barrel their own seats while failing to deliver for the community. It's always good to have interjections from Senator Rennick. We know he won't be here very long to make more of them. We saw how the Liberals and Nationals treated Infrastructure Australia, ignoring its advice and stacking its board with the Liberal and National Party mates. And we all know how they used colour-coded spreadsheets to pick projects. That is simply how the Liberals and Nationals roll. They only focus on the projects that will benefit Order. them politically and listen to them Order. bleep now. They will never focus on projects that will actually benefit the community. At the Commonwealth level, we saw this most clearly with the Urban Congestion Fund. This was a $4.8 billion program that allocated 83 per cent of its funding to Liberal-held seats. It was meant to target pinch points and congestions in cities across the country, cities that people in the gallery live in. Uh, but 136 of the announced projects were in the Liberal-held areas. Senator Rennick. And in New South Wales, we've seen pork barrelling turned into an art form. From sports, clubs, uh, club, from sports club grants to bushfire grants, is there anything that the New South Wales Liberal and National Parties haven't sought to rule? This Saturday, the voters of New South Wales have a chance to have their say, just like voters did last May. They can reject rorting, reject pork barrelling and elect the expired. Labor government. Senator Sheldon, first supplementary. Well, I thank the Minister for outlining the work that's been done to fix a decade worth of coalition mess while restoring integrity to the infrastructure pipeline. Of course, I note in New South Wales, the Liberals and Nationals bought cracked trains, trams from Spain, unsafe trains from Korea, decapitating ferries from Indonesia. I want to ask the Minister that how does the government is investing in infrastructure that creates jobs and enhances the economic productivity for local communities you, in New Senator South Wales? Thank you, Senator Sheldon. The time for asking has expired. Minister Watt. Uh, thanks again, Senator Sheldon. Well, the Albanese government is investing in projects that will deliver jobs and opportunities to communities that actually need them, regardless of what colour they are on the spreadsheet. One of the biggest infrastructure projects in the country right now is Western Sydney Airport. It will support almost 28,000 direct and indirect jobs by Senator 2031, McGrath. five years after the airport will open in 2026. Importantly, these benefits and this opportunity will flow to local residents in Western Sydney, with at least 30 per cent of jobs during the construction phase having to come from local residents. Uh, when the airport opens, this will increase to a minimum of 50 per cent. And the Albanese government's skills guarantee means that 10 per cent of our workers on Commonwealth-funded infrastructure major projects will be an apprentice, a trainee or a paid cadet. Communities across New South Wales are sick of spending that is focused only on the political advantage of the government of the day. Working with the Minns Labor government will focus on the enabling infrastructure to deliver the greatest benefits to communities across Western Thank Sydney. Thank you, Senator Watt. Senator Sheldon, second supplementary. Thanks, Minister. That's great to hear that because proper infrastructure investment in our regions is critical. And residents of regional New South Wales are sick of investment decisions being made on the basis of electoral boundaries rather than on merit. For example, we all saw the Liberals and Nationals event even pork barrelled with bushfire grants. When one thing in Labor won't be there will be no one in the Minns government that will be turning around and calling themselves pork barrelaro. How has the cleaning up infrastructure investment delivered for Thank regional you, communities? Thank you, Senator Sheldon. The time for arts asking has expired. Senator Watt. Thank you, Senator Sheldon. Well, we all remember that under coalition governments, Commonwealth and state. It is regional communities that bear the brunt of underinvestment and political pork barrelling. The biggest example of this at the Commonwealth level is the Building Better Regions Fund, and geez, they don't like being reminded Order. of it. Like Former coalition ministers made decisions on projects based on a choose your own adventure criteria that was not even uh, explained Minister to White, those applying to grants. Order across the chamber. Minister Watt, please continue. Thank you, President. Well, national party seats benefited the most. As proper, uh, well, mate, do you want Watt, us to talk about that Minister right on Watt, Mara again? Minister Watt, please resume your seat. Senator Grah, I've just called the whole chamber to order. I do not expect you to then continue interjecting. It is disrespectful and disorderly. Minister Watt. 
And at a state level, the Nationals behave exactly the same way, even going so far as to rort bushfire funds in New South Wales. Senator McGrath. And if you think all this behaviour ended with pork barrel aro, you'd be very mistaken. The same people who were around the cabinet table when these decisions were made are now seeking another term in office. Only the Albanese Labor government and a Minns New South Wales Labor government will stop the rorts, deliver for Sydney and deliver for Senator regional McGrath. New South Wales. Order. Uh, Senator Watt, I will remind you when referring to um, members of other parliaments, it is uh, inappropriate to not use their correct titles. Um, Senator Roberts. Thank you, President. My, my question is to the Minister for Foreign Affairs and thus today to Senator Farrell. An ambassador is a person sent as the chief representative of his or her own government in another country. Given you have appointed a First Nations ambassador, does the government believe Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are a separate sovereign nation? Thank you, Senator Roberts. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> President, and uh, thank you, uh, Senator Roberts, for um, your um, question. Um, uh, and your uh, early advice uh, about uh, the fact that you were going to ask that uh, question of me. Um, the Albanese government is committed to implementing the Uluru Statement of the Heart in full and embed Indigenous perspectives, experiences and interests in our foreign policy. Um, Australia's foreign policy should reflect who we are, uh, home to uh, more than uh, 300 ancestries and the oldest continuous um, culture on earth. We have, as you uh, have rightly uh, said, um, appointed Mr Justin, Justin Mohammed as Australia's first inaugural ambassador uh, for Australia's uh, First Nations uh, people. Um, <coughs> he, uh, he will lead uh, an office uh, of First Nations engagement within DFAT uh, to listen to and work with in genuine partnership with um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait uh, Islander peoples. Um, <clears throat> Mr uh, uh, Mohammed has worked for decades in Aboriginal and uh, Torres Strait Islander health, social, uh, justice and uh, reconciliation in roles spanning the uh, Aboriginal community, government and corporate uh, sectors. Our First Nations foreign policy will help grow First Nations trade and investment. And can I say, um, having, having had the opportunity to discuss um, indigenous, uh, <clears throat> an Indigenous role in trade and investment, um, it uh, is a significant issue of interest for other countries, and I might add uh, in that area uh, tourism, uh, tourism as well. Um, Thank you, Minister. The time for answering Thank has you. expired. Senator uh, Roberts. Thank you. Will you guarantee the First Nations ambassador, Mr Mohammed, will not make any representations to foreign countries or bodies on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander sovereignty? A yes or no is sufficient. Thank you, uh, Senator Roberts. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you and Thank you, thank you, President, and thank you, um, Senator Roberts, and for very helpful, helpfully suggesting how I might answer your uh, question. But with due respect, I'll answer it in the uh, way that um, <clears throat> I would like to, and I think um, addresses uh, your uh, your point quite directly. Um, this appointment is about making sure Australian foreign policy tells our full story, home to peoples of more than uh, 300 ancestry and the oldest continuous uh, culture on earth. Uh, projecting this reality of modern Australia to the world enables us to find common ground and alignment with other countries so we can work together towards um, the region uh, we want, an open, peaceful, prosperous and respectful of sovereignty. First Nations uh, connection uh, to the countries of our region go back thousands of years they were the continent's first diplomats you, and the first traders. Um, Senator Roberts, second supplementary. Thank you. City-based, white-skinned activists imported the term First Nations from Canada and installed it in our universities. The term has nothing to do with our Australian Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders. Given these facts, do you agree that it is insulting to call our Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders First Nations 
and to appoint an ambassador using that term. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, President, and uh, thank you, uh, Senator Roberts, for his uh, question. No. Uh, Senator Fawcett. Thank you, uh, President. My question is also to the Minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Farrell. Will the Minister update the Senate on the status of TikTok bans announced or implemented by other Five Eyes nations? Thank you, uh, Senator Fawcett. Minister, Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, President, and uh, thank you, um, uh, Senator, for your uh, um, question. Um, and I note that uh, concerns regarding uh, TikTok uh, are not new, uh, and have been uh, um, matters of uh, public debate for some time. Um, uh, of course, <clears throat> I think it's fair to say. Um, that in government you had plenty of time to uh, take some action uh, on this uh, on this issue. I'm disappointed, uh, Senator Pat. Um, Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Farrell, uh, Senator Fawcett. Uh, point of order: the minister's misleading the house. TikTok only launched in Australia um, in 2019. Senator Fawcett, uh, that is a debating point. Minister, please continue. Well, 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 well. Thank you, President. Um, well, my, my point was that if, if your government was so worried about TikTok um, and you claim that TikTok was introduced in 2019, well, on, on my calculations, that gave you three years. No, not that. This one here. Three, three years. Three years to deal with it. Um, I don't, I don't say you had nine years to deal with it, but I do say you had three years to uh, to deal with the uh, the issue. So, uh, you know, talk about crocodile tears, um, of crying, crying, uh, crying about. Um, um, Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Birmingham. Thank you, President. Point of order on direct relevance. Uh, Senator Farrell has had a little bit of fun in responding to the earlier point of order, but I would ask you to bring him back to what was quite precisely worded question uh, and to be directly relevant to that, which is asking him to update the Senate on the status of TikTok bans announced or implemented by other Five Eyes nations. He has not gone close Thank you, to the status Senator of those Birmingham. international actions. I will direct the minister to uh, the question. Um, minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, President. <clears throat> well, of course, um, the rise of social media and those um, <clears throat> In the chamber the other night, will recall me uh, giving some advice to people about uh, social uh, social media uh, platform <coughs> platforms. Um, Australians are uh, sharing uh, more data and uh, more details on pat platforms that are not necessarily protecting that information. Uh, Australians deserve to be protected by uh, uh, regulatory. Minister Farrell, <coughs> please resume your seat. Senator Fawcett. Point of order on relevance. The question was about the actions by other Five Eyes nations, not Australia. Thank you, Senator Fawcett. I have directed the minister, and I will direct the minister again to your question. Thank you, uh, thank you President. Um, um, the, the Australian government is currently looking at. Uh, thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Fawcett, our first supplementary. Minister, on 16 March, the deputy leader of the UK Labor Party, Angela Rayner, said in relation to the recent UK government ban on TikTok on government devices, and I quote, this is a government behind the curve with sticking past the solutions forced to lurch into a U-turn at the last minute, end quote. Does the minister agree with the UK Labor Party that a decision on TikTok is already well overdue? Thank you, uh, Senator Fawcett. Minister Farrell. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, President, and uh, thank uh, Senator Forshett for um, his question. Uh, Order. And I've, Order. I've, I've got to say, wonders never cease. Um, I never ever thought, I never, I never ever thought uh, that I'd see the day when uh, you were quoting statements from the uh, UK Labor government uh, in support of your. Arguments now. Now, um, this government, this government takes the issue of TikTok seriously. Um, we are in the process of, well, well, 
you had years and years and years to deal with this issue. You did nothing. And so many, like so many other things, where you had... Order. Where, where there were issues that you should have dealt with in government, of course you didn't do it. So, so we are... Thank we you, are, Minister look, Farrell. The time for answering has expired. Senator Fawcett, second supplementary. Thank you. Minister, given that Senator Patterson first raised on behalf of the Coalition the dangers of TikTok on government devices in July last year, and that all of Australia's Five Eyes partners have now acted, and that even the UK Labor Party, which, by the way, is in Order. opposition, not government, supports a ban, will the Albanese government now finally commit to banning TikTok on government devices? Thank you, Senator Fawcett. Minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, thank you President. No, look, you're right, uh, Senator. I was jumping ahead of myself. I'm, you know, anticipating uh, a uh, Labor victory in the well, New South Wales election, of course, but the UK election uh, in due course. Look, we have taken this issue seriously in a way that you never did when you were in uh, government. Um, the minister is um, currently uh, looking the at the uh, looking, looking, looking at. Well, well, why didn't you act? In the three years, in the three years, why, why, why didn't, why didn't you act? Why didn't you act when Minister you had Farrell. three years to Minister do it? Farrell. Like so many things, you never Minister acted Farrell. when you could have Please done it. And seat. now, Minister, Senator Birmingham. Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Once again, Senators, there was so much disorder in here, the Minister was unable to hear me asking him to resume his seat so that we could regain order and hear his answer. Please continue, Minister. Yeah, on a, uh, on a, on a, Minister on a... Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Stirl, when I've just called the Chamber to order, that is incredibly disorderly, Minister Farrell. Thank you, President. And on a day when we're trying to lift the uh, standards here and show a bit of respect, it's yeah, order, yeah. order. We've uh, we 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 I, you know, I can't even get an opportunity to answer the uh, question. Well, no, no. The answer the answer is not that. Uh, I, Minister, that's the not time the, for that's answering not the has expired. Senator Shoebridge. Oh, thank you, President. My question is to Minister Farrell, representing the Minister for Defence. How many kilograms of highly enriched uranium, that's nuclear weapons grade uranium, will be carried on each of the Virginia class submarines Australia is intending to acquire under the AUKUS submarine deal? How much, Minister? Thank you, Senator Shoebridge. Minister Farrell. Thank you, President, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you uh, Senator uh, Shoebridge. Um, look, the um, the Australian government uh, has taken the decision, uh, um, and it's a decision I appreciate that uh, uh, that you don't uh, you don't agree with, nor does your party uh, agree with. But to go down the track of replacing our Collins class uh, submarines, which were built in South Australia, um, with with um, uh, nuclear powered uh, submarines now. There's a process uh, here, of course, um, a staged process. As we know, the, the, government, the former government uh, for nine years um, had a series of... Uh... Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Minister. Um, Senator Shoebridge, I have drawn it to your attention before not to stand to your feet and call point of order. Um, I am trying to keep order in this place, and doing disorderly things like that does not assist. Senator Shoebridge. My point of order is relevance. My question was very simple about how much highly enriched uranium each of these Virginia class submarines will be carrying, not requesting a history lesson Thank about the you, failure Senator of the coalition. Senator Shoebridge, you've made your point of order and I will remind the minister of your question. Minister. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, President. Um, look, um, I don't think you can deal with um, the issue that you're uh, seeking to ask questions about with, without looking back at the nine years, the nine, the nine long years uh, Minister of Farrell, neglect. Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Order on my left. I have a senator on his feet. Or, senator Birmingham. 
Uh, Senator Shoebridge. It's the same point of order, President, yep, and the minister you. is is even ignoring your direction. Uh, thank you, Senator Shoebridge. I will remind the minister of the question, Minister Farrell. No, I'm not going to say that. Minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, thank you, President. <clears throat> well, I know, I know it, I know it aggravates um, the uh, the opposition to keep referring to the fact that in nine long years you couldn't make. A single, a single decision um, Senator, about Senator the issue Farrell, of Minister Farrell. Please resume your seat, Senator Shoebridge. It's the same point of order, but now the minister has twice flouted your direction to him. Yeah. I oh. ask you to call him to order. Thank you, Senator Shoebridge. Order. I have called the Senate to order. I will again remind uh, the minister of the question. Minister, please continue. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, President. Um, the the uh, the decision uh, that uh, we have made, and as I sort of pointed out earlier, I I order oh, no, on my few, left. There's still a few up there. Um, the issue, the issue, the no, <laughs> we're we're all awake. We're all sound asleep. Uh, um, all 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 wide awake. Um, the issue, the issue which um, uh, Senator Shoebridge uh, raises, of course, I understand he doesn't agree with the uh, decision Farrell, to shift to. Minister Farrell, the time for answering to... has expired. Senator Shoebridge, first supplementary. We all feel it. Don't worry, we all feel it. Just a moment, Just Senator really Shoebridge. Nice. Order on my left. I have a senator waiting to ask a question. Senator Shoebridge. Um, Given it is impossible for nuclear reg regulation, safety or, or, or disposal to, to be effective if you refuse to say, as you have just then, or don't know, as is probably clearly the case, how much weapons-grade uranium these submarines will carry, how can this decision be in line with our international non-proliferation treaty obligations, and why won't you tell the truth? Thank you, uh, Senator Shoebridge. Minister Farrell. Thank you, uh, President, and uh, thank uh, Senator Shoebridge for his uh, first uh, supplementary uh, question. Well, I totally uh, reject the proposition that we're not telling the truth. Uh, unlike, unlike, unlike the former uh, government, uh, we have been as absolutely open as we can about the way forward in terms of our uh, defence and uh, security uh, issues. Um, We've, uh, we've only last week the Prime Minister um, sat with the American President and the English uh, Prime Minister to explain to the world and, uh, of course, uh, subsequent to that, uh, our neighbours in this uh, region exactly uh, what Minister it is. Minister Farrell, please resume your seat. Senator Chubridge. Uh, my question was about nuclear regulation, safety and disposal, not the uh, meeting uh, some weeks ago. And the minister is again refusing to be relevant. Uh, thank you, Senator Shoebridge. You did go to the non-proliferation treaty, and you did talk about telling the truth as well. I do believe the minister is being relevant, but I shall continue to listen carefully. Thank you, uh, President. Uh, we will honour all of our obligations under uh, under our treaties, um, and that was made very clear uh, by the Prime Minister and the Defence uh, Minister. In all of the discussions. Thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Shoebridge, second supplementary. Given it's on the public record from the likes of radiation and nuclear safety expert Emeritus Professor Ian Lowe that each Virginia class submarine carries 200 kilograms of weapons grade uranium, more than three times the amount of enriched uranium used in the bombing of Hiroshima, what guarantees are you providing on how that material can be safely accommodated near major population centres like Port? Port Kembla. Thank you, Senator Shoebridge. Minister. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, President. Thank uh, Senator uh, uh, Shoebridge for his second uh, supplementary uh, question. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that decisions have been made about uh, where the uh, submarines uh, will be docked uh, uh, um, in, uh, in the east coast of uh, Australia. So I'm um, not sure that your assertion that uh, it relates to uh, Port uh, uh, Port Kembla are, uh, are are correct. But um, look, we we have treaty obligations. Um, uh, we um, 
support those treaty obligations, uh, we will ensure um, that we comply with all of our international obligations uh, in respect to uh, uh, nuclear uh, issues. Uh, that includes the Treaty of Rarotonga. Um, and uh, rest assured that um, um, every one of our obligations. Rest assured that every you, Minister, one of our the international time for obligations. Has expired. Minister, the time for answering has expired. Senator Walsh. <clears throat> Thank you, President. My question is to the Minister for Trade and Tourism, Senator Farrell. In the Minister's speech delivered on 14 November last year at the Australian APEC Study Centre at RMIT, the Minister outlined the Albanese government's approach to trade policy. A central plank of the government's trade policy strategy is market diversification. This approach seeks to provide more commercial opportunities in overseas markets to avoid over-relying on any single trading partner. To this end, can the Minister provide an update on the status of the Australia-United Kingdom Free Trade Agreement? Minister Farrell. Uh, thank you, President, and thanks, Senator Walsh, uh, for her uh, question. I know she has a deep interest in uh, trade uh, issues. Um, and after a decade of uh, coalition government, Australia is more dependent uh, than ever on a single market for our exports. To overcome this predicament, the Albanese Labor government is actively progressing a trade policy agenda that creates more opportunities for Australian businesses to gain new market access into major markets. This includes implementing a gold standard trade agreement with the United Kingdom. The Liberal, the Liberal government, the Liberal government, the former Liberal government dropped the ball by failing, failing to conclude parliamentary processes Order. to implement the, the Australian Order. new... Senator Birmingham in particular. Minister Farrell, please continue. In contrast, this government prioritised the parliamentary processes to implement the UK Free Trade Agreement, which was concluded uh, last year. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I'm pleased to advise the Senate that overnight, I'm pleased. Listen, please listen to this. Please listen to this. Calm down. Calm down. I'm pleased to advise that overnight, uh, that uh, the United Kingdom move closer to finalise its finalising its domestic processes to be in a position to implement the trade deal with Australia. A significant step was taken with the King providing royal assent uh, to UK legislation to bring the bilateral free trade agreement into force. Completion of this step paves the way uh, for the laying of subordinate legislation in the United uh, Kingdom and Scottish parliaments uh, the final procedure required to complete the UK's ratification process. The Albanese government is looking forward to implementing the free trade agreement. Thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Walsh, first supplementary. <clears throat> Thank you, President. The United Kingdom is one of Australia's closest and most important partners. We already have deep economic and people-to-people -people links. Can the Minister explain how the Australia-United Kingdom Free Trade Agreement will deliver additional benefits to Australians? Minister Farrell. Thank you, President, and thank uh, Senator Walsh again for her, uh, her question. A free trade agreement with the United Kingdom will provide significant opportunities for all Australians. The United Kingdom is Australia's fifth largest trading partner. The deal removes tariffs on over 99 per cent of Australian goods exported to the United Kingdom, uh, valued at about $9.2 billion. This outcome provides significant commercial opportunities for our farmers, our food producers, including for beef, sheep meat, wine, dairy, rice and sugar exports. The agreement will provide a level playing field for Australian uh, uh, services suppliers, including they are transfixed. They are transfixed. They Senator are transfixed, McGrath. Senator, Senator, Senator uh, including, including professionals assessing the uh, UK market. When implemented, the agreement will help to lower the cost Minister of living Farrell, pressures for Australian for families. Senator Walsh, second supplementary. 
Thank you, President. The Australia United Kingdom Free Trade Agreement is the first full trade agreement the UK negotiated from scratch following Brexit. Can the minister explain how the free trade agreement will boost jobs and commercial opportunities? Senator Farrell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Walsh. Um, while the UK trade deal uh, will benefit all Australians by creating more jobs and commercial opportunities, uh, I will provide one example for the great state of New South Wales, which goes to the ballot box tomorrow. SIA Medical, which is based in Sydney, is Australia's largest provider of ep epilepsy diagnostic services. The company is expanding fast and recently opened uh, an office in London. And while in London last year, I saw firsthand the cutting edge technology, this Australian cutting edge uh, technology, in action. And it's truly amazing technology developed here in Australia. The team said that they were excited about the benefits that the trade deal will deliver, including facilitating the movement of equipment and, uh, and staff. This is just one example of how the UK trade deal will improve business opportunities. Thank you, Minister. Senator Canavan. Thank you, uh, Madam Order. President. Um, uh, Senator Canavan, please resume your seat. Order on my left and right. I've got a senator on his feet waiting to ask a question. Senator Canavan. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, my question is to the minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Farrell. In question time this Wednesday, uh, Senator Farrell stated to us all that it is the objective of the Albanese government to put downward pressure on power prices. Minister. As we near the end of the first year of the Albanese government, are power prices now lower anywhere in Australia compared to the day of the election? Thank you, Senator Canavan. Minister Farrell. Thank you, President. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Senator Canavan, for his question. And of course, you are part of that government that uh, failed to disclose to the Australian people in the weeks, 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 weeks. You were part of that coalition government that refused to disclose to the Australian people that you had in increased the price of electricity in the weeks before the last federal election. So uh, please don't come into this uh, place uh, uh, lecturing us about power prices. Now, what have we done? What have we done about it? Well, we did two things in particular. We did two things in particular to put downward pressure on electricity Order. prices because it's okay please continue because because we saw we saw the neglect of your government over um, almost a decade uh, in dealing with this issue so what did we do as soon as we came into office one of the very first things uh, thank you minister senator canavan thank you madam president just a point of order on relevance uh, the question didn't go to what is being done. It went to the outcomes. It went to a clear, very simple question about whether the minister knows a place in Australia where power prices are lower. I would ask you respectfully to draw his attention to that particular question. Uh, and thank you, Senator Canavan. And the first part of your question did go to downward pressure. And I'll remind the minister of the second part of uh, your question, Minister. Thank you, uh, President, and thank you. Uh, Senator Canavan, I like to answer all parts of your questions. Um, <laughs> order, order, Minister. Please continue. Thank you, thank you, President. Um, uh, the, the Albanese government understands the pressure uh, that's on Australian families as a result of uh, rising rising electricity prices. Uh, of course, we've seen the, the terrible war in the, uh, in the Ukraine and, what's, and what that's done to prices right around the world. Every country in the world uh, is facing upward pressure on electricity prices. What did we do? What did we do? We kept the price of gas, we kept the price of coal in order to push the price down, and you voted against Thank it. Thank you, Minister. The time for answering has expired. Senator Canavan, first supplementary. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, also in question time on, on Wednesday, Senator Farrell said that, I quote, nobody understands cost of living pressures more than our Prime Minister. If that is true, Minister, then can you explain why 
After 10 consecutive interest rate rises on Mr Albanese's watch, an Australian family with a mortgage on a $750,000 property is now having to find an extra $20,000 a year to pay off their mortgage. Uh, Minister Farrell. Um, thank you, President. <coughs> thank you, uh, <coughs> thank you, President. Thank uh, Senator Canavan for his uh, his question. Um, look, uh, worldwide, um, there's been upward pressure on mortgage rates. Um, regrettably, Australia is not alone in that regard, and in many respects, it's uh, a hangover. <coughs> it's a hang. Well, uh, as Senator Gallagher rightly uh, says, of course, they started going up uh, under your uh, government. So it was it was the economic it was the economic policies set in place by, by by your government. Now, we understand we understand why that was, Senator Canavan. We understand why that was because uh, <coughs> you made a whole lot of wrong decisions in the course of the. Uh, uh, the pandemic, which um, no doubt, uh, no, 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 no. That's no, no, no. Uh, Senator Minister, Birmingham, the time I... for answering has expired. Senator Birmingham, President, I seek leave to move a motion relating to the Albanese Labor government, as circulated in the chamber, which states that the Senate notes that a Senator Farrell has demonstrated how out of touch the Albanese Labor government is when it comes to cost of living pressures on Australian households and businesses when he said, I do not follow power prices closely. B. Senator Farrell has demonstrated that the Albanese Labor government has no real plan to address cost of living pressures on Australian households and businesses. And C. Condemns the Albanese Labor government for breaking its promises to Australians by one failing to deliver its promised $275 reduction in power bills, two, failing to deliver its promised cheaper mortgages, three, failing to honour its promise to not change Order. superannuation taxes, Order. four, failing to honour its promise to not change taxes on franking credits, Senator five, Birmingham. failing Senator to honour its promise. Senator Birmingham, please resume your seat. Order on my left and right. Senator Birmingham. Please continue. Five, failing to honour its promise to deliver real wage increases. Six, failing to honour its promise to lower cost of living pressures. And seven, failing to categorically rule out breaking its promise to honour the legislated stage three tax cuts in full. Uh, thank you, Senator Birmingham. You've sought leave, but I do remind the cham chamber that uh, Senator Canavan was entitled to ask his se second supplementary question. Uh, Senator Canavan, did you wish to do that before I go to the question of leave? Senator Canavan, please, when you answer, I'm asking you a question. I expect you to I'm stand. I'm perfectly fine for the uh, Leader of the Opposition to have precedence on these Thank matters. you, Senator Canavan. Is leave granted? No, uh, Senator Canavan has declined uh, his second supplementary, um, and I'm now asking if leave is granted to Senator Birmingham. No, leave is not granted, Senator Birmingham. Thank you. Oh, just a moment, Senator Birmingham. Please resume your seat. Order, order, order. On my left, your leader is on his feet. Leave has been denied. Senator Birmingham. Thank you, President. Pursuant to contingent notice standing in my name, I move that so much of the standing orders be suspended as would prevent me from moving a motion as outlined before and circulated in the chamber for the consideration of a matter, namely a motion to give precedence to a motion relating to the Albanese Labor government. Here, here. President, most Australians know the small goods advertising campaign with the slogan is Don is good. Sadly, this week, Senator Farrell has looked and sounded more like a turkey than any sort of tasty small goods. A turkey with answer after answer comprising of nothing but gobbledygook. Gobbledygook, gobbledygook, endless ums, ahs, stalling tactics, pauses, evasionary tactics, to get to the end of Senator every Birmingham, single question you, and run Senator the clock Birmingham, down. Senator Birmingham, please resume your seat. Order. A suspension of standing orders has been um, sought. 
That is what you are speaking to. You need to be explaining why we need to suspend standing orders. Thank you. And, President, it has been an extraordinary show this week from the acting leader of the government in the Senate, so extraordinary that it does warrant consideration of an extraordinary motion that necessitates the suspension of standing orders. Yeah. Senator Farrell, during the course of this week, was asked about the rate of electricity price increases in Australia. What did we get? Don't know. He was asked about the rate of grocery price increases in Australia. What did we get? Don't know. Senator Farrell was asked about the rate of rental rate increases in Australia. What did we get? Don't know. Senator Farrell was asked about the rate of mortgage increases in Australia. And what did we get? Don't know. Not only does Senator Farrell not know, but indeed he admitted— Senator Birmingham, Senator Birmingham, please resume your seat. Order across the chamber, but particularly on my left. I did remind you that you have sought to suspend standing orders, and that needs to be why you need to be demonstrating to the chamber why you are seeking that suspension. And, Senator, and President, as I outlined, this has been quite an extraordinary week in the Senate. That does warrant the suspension um, of Birmingham, standing orders. Senator please resume your seat. Senator McGrath, I've just called the chamber to order. You are being incredibly disrespectful and disorderly. I would ask you to be silent, Minister uh, Senator Birmingham. Please continue. So extraordinary it has been, President, that not only has Senator Farrell indicated he doesn't know the answers to these things, but on power prices, he admitted, "I do not follow power prices closely." Doesn't care. But right around Australia, households, small businesses are opening their power prices each and every day under the shock of the increasing rates of electricity, genuine concern and pressures that they are feeling. And here we have the Albanese Labor government saying it doesn't know, it doesn't follow it, and apparently it seems it just does not care. It doesn't care. It is a government indeed that is out of touch. Of course, it hasn't just been in relation to those matters affecting Order. the cost of living pressures on Australians that we've seen this remarkable performance. Even on national security matters, such as cyber security protections of Five Eyes partners, or indeed in relation to giving cogent answers on the AUKUS partnership, Senator Farrell has demonstrated time and again that he and the Albanese government just don't know. Don't know don't care, are not properly in touch. And of course, President, it comes on the back of a government that is continuously breaking its promises. As we approach the one-year anniversary of this government, it is worth this chamber taking the step to give special attention to debate the many broken promises of this government. Senator Birmingham, because Senator Senator Farrell, Birmingham please resume your seat. Once again, the disorder across the chamber. Senate, Senator Brown, I've just sat the senator down, the leader of the opposition, to call for order. I don't expect senators to continue to call out. Senator Birmingham. As we approach the one-year anniversary of the Albanese government, it is worth this chamber taking time to debate the extraordinary list of broken promises that are being racked up and the denial of them that is occurring on the other side. Time and again we have sought to get the government to respond directly to their promise that they would reduce household electricity prices by $275. Indeed, during the course of this week, we have actually asked them to acknowledge direct quotes out of their own policy document. They won't acknowledge it. We have even handled the document across the chamber with the quote highlighted. They still wouldn't acknowledge it. We even asked Senator Farrell yesterday just to say the words $275, and he could not say it. He would not say it. They will not admit that on more than 97 occasions before Australians cast their votes, they went out and promised power price reductions of $275, and then the day after the election, not once since, have they been willing to repeat that promise? Not one single day have any of you been game to repeat that promise, nor has Prime Minister Albanese, because you knew you never had an intention of delivering it. You knew it would never happen. It was a broken promise from the moment you made it. Just like your promises to not change superannuation taxes, 
Just like your promises to not change franking credits, they are all broken promises from a government that has demonstrated just how inept it is, how committed to breaking its promises it is and, as a result, how much the Australian people are feeling the pain from a government showing so Thank early you, how Bannon, out of touch time it has is. Expired. Senator Farrell. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, look, I've got to say I'm pretty disappointed in uh, Senator uh, Birmingham. These schoolboy tactics, um, these schoolboy tactics you should have left, you should have left behind. You should have left behind uh, maybe at university even. But, but look, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why uh, and I don't think you've quite understood this, uh, Senator Birmingham. One of the reasons why you only got 71 likes on your uh, Facebook the other day is nobody is listening to you. Nobody is listening to you. The reason that they're not listening Minister to you Farrell, is Senator you're Farrell, irrelevant. You're Senator irrelevant Farrell. to the Australian people. Senator why Farrell. did you lose? Why Senator did you lose Farrell. 20? Order. Sorry. Order. Please resume your seat. Once again, I had to call order about four times. This is disrespectful and it's incredibly disorderly. Minister Farrell. They don't like. They don't like me telling them the truth about how irrelevant they are. You were rejected by the Australian people. You haven't got over that. You haven't got over the fact that you're rejected and what, what you hate. What you absolutely hate is, anth well, that's true. I'm so, yeah, you're, you're dead right there, Senator Thrill. You do hate each other. You do hate each other. I know you want some diversion from the uh, the rust and antic. Where is antic? He's out getting in his numbers, I suppose. You want some diversion Minister from Farrell. the rustic, the rust. Minister Farrell, uh, please, um, when referring to a senator in this place, use his proper title, Senator O'Sullivan. Thank you, President. On point of order, you just addressed yes. the first one Thank that I was you. going to raise. And the second one is uh, ask you to ask the Minister to direct his comments through the chair, please. I, I do believe he is doing that, Senator O'Sullivan, but I will remind him to direct his comments to the chair. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, President. And uh, yes, I should have referred to the dispute between Senator Rustin and Senator Antic uh, about pre-selections in South Australia, and that's why, that's why, of course, that's why, of course, it's Senator Birmingham. That's why it's Senator Birmingham who is trying Farrell. to divert Senator attention Farrell. from the terrible, terrible Senator internal. Farrell, please resume your seat. Order. I'll come to you in a moment, Senator Birmingham. I've just called the chamber to order, and the minute the minister got back to his feet, the disorder and the interjections immediately started up again. Minister, uh, Senator Birmingham. President, on a point of order, you drew me to the question of the matter of suspension Correct. of standing orders on multiple occasions. Without anybody having to make a point of order, I invite you to apply the same standard to Senator Farrell. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator Birmingham. I did draw you to the uh, suspension. I know you very rarely went there, but I will uh, do the same to Minister Farrell. They, thank you, President. They can't stand the truth. The truth is you were a, an irrelevant uh, government, you're a bad government, and you are an irrelevant opposition. Senator and McGrath. That's not, uh, that's not Farrell, arrogance when I tell it. Uh, I ask for that to be withdrawn. I withdraw. Thank you, Minister Farrell. Now, um, what are we doing on terms of cost of living? We're putting downward pressure on cost of living. How many times have I spoken this week? How many times have I spoken this week about what we're doing to push down the price? Uh, Senator Farrell, of I do direct you to uh, your comments to the suspension of the standing orders. Yeah. Please continue. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm commenting on the uh, suspension, um, President. Um, the reality is uh, that this government, this government is doing things that the previous government was never ever prepared to do, and which you have opposed uh, in opposition to put the downward. Oh, 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 come off it! Come off it! Come off it! 
Um, come off it, Senator. Uh, Senator, uh, we're we're put we're we're putting we're putting. This is a government that understands the problems of ordinary working Australians, which your government, which Order. your government never Order. ever never ever Fair understood use. and never never ever will understand the problems of ordinary working Australians. We're putting that down with pressure. Cheaper medicines, cheaper medicines, cheaper childcare, cheaper childcare, expanding, expanding parental leave to six months, finally getting wages Minister moving Farrell, again. What was your, your policy? I'm going to wait for order once again. Minister Farrell, please continue. What was your, what was your policy on wages? Senator Birmingham. Structurally, uh, keep wages uh, depressed. We've supported ordinary working people to get wages uh, going. More affordable housing. We're doing something about affordable housing which you completely ignored. Um, Fee-free fee -free, uh, TAFE places. All of these things, all of these things are putting, putting downward pressure. And of course, and of course, and of course, and of course, we're, we're delivering on recognition of Australia, of uh, First Nations people by delivering a voice to Parliament. Now, you don't like, you don't like us doing any of those things. Uh, but we're the government. We're, we're the government. We're looking after the people of Australia. We're looking after the people of, in, of Australia in a way Senator that Dunham. you have never done, never been able to do. Um, and, uh, Our order on my left. Senator Farrell, please continue. Completed my... Uh, Minister, uh, Minister Gallagher. Oh, thank you. Got the call. Uh, the government won't be su supporting the suspension of standing orders, and I think we've all learnt today that next sitting Friday we don't invite the opposition uh, to attend. I mean, that's what we're seeing. Well, no, that's a, that's that's because Minister Gallagher, please resume your seat. Senator McGrath and Senator Hughes, I've just called the chamber to order. Minister Gallagher. Senator McGrath, Senator McGrath, you're making my point for me. You're making my point for me. You're shouting at Senator us. Senator McGrath. Shout. Keep going. Come on. Is this the Senate of Australia? This is honestly uh, the Senate Minister of Gallagher. Australia is, Senator is McGrath. watching this. Senator McGrath, please resume your seat. Please resume your seat, Minister. Minister, I've asked you to sit down. Senator McGrath, I have constantly called you because you are out of order and you are being disrespectful. Minister Gallagher. Thank you, um, President. But this suspension, I think, demonstrates what we've been seeing for the last 10 months, but it's really hit home this week for the opposition, it seems, an increasingly irrelevant and obstructionist gathering of senators in this place that are determined to undermine and and sort of, um, you know, distract and cause damage uh, to anything constructive that tries to be done in this place. That's what we've been seeing. That's why here we are, with the last ten minutes, the last ten minutes of the Senate sitting this week, we are dealing with a suspension debate. Nothing else, just a suspension debate on 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 your essentially reflecting on your Order. conduct uh, Order. this week. Um, Order. Obstructionist and irrelevant. Say no to everything. Say no to absolutely everything. Everything that we are sent here to do in this place, to progress issues on behalf of the Australian people, to implement the policies that we took to the election, you say no to. You say no to wage rises. You, know, you say no to the safeguard mechanism. You say no to the climate laws. You say no to extra housing. You say no to new manufacturing jobs. The list goes on and on and on. And when you say no to everything, you have nothing to say, do you? So you have to move suspension debates like you did this morning and like you're doing now because you are so irrelevant you have nothing to bring to this chamber. You have absolutely no value to bring to this chamber. And so we are at the point where, with 10 minutes to go, this is the best that you have. Order. This is the best Order. that you have. 
You say no to almost every piece of legislation that comes in this chamber. You don't want to debate anything. You Minister, don't want to talk about it. Your, your behaviour. Minister Gallagher, please resume your seat. Once again, and I reminded senators of this earlier, if you wish to participate in the debate, please seek the call. It is not okay to continue to be so disorderly that I have to call this place to order every few minutes. Minister. Uh, thank you. The government has done more in 10 months than those opposite did in almost 10 years. Senator Vann. We have done more in 10 months, and you can't stand it. You can't stand the fact that that is what we've done. We've gone around implementing our election commitments. We've gone around with the commitments we made to the Australian people to put those in place, and you have voted no at pretty much every single opportunity. That's what's happened, and that's why we find ourselves here with 10 minutes to go discussing this this suspension uh, motion, which won't even get completed uh, by, three, by the end of the time the Senate sits. That's the strategic brilliance of what's been put uh, before the Senate today. We have been implementing our policies for women. We have been implementing our policies to invest in early childhood education. We have been implementing policies with downward pressure on energy prices. You even voted no to that. One and a half billion dollars going in to ensure people's power bills don't increase the point that they otherwise would have, and you voted no to that. I mean, honestly, how do you go back to your jurisdictions and explain that to constituents? How do you go back and say, oh, well, actually, you know what? The government tried to put downward pressure on your electricity bills, and we said no. There's a badge of honour. There's something ticked off in Canberra. What about wages? The minute wages getting moving, something that you spent 10 years opposing. Senator wages Hughes. getting moving. All the attempts that we make, our secure jobs, better pay legislation. No, 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 no. Nothing. All the bills that are in place for this week, no to all of them. National Reconstruction Fund, no. Housing Australia Future Fund, no, nope, not good enough. For those opposite, didn't do anything in 10 years, don't want to do anything for the next year either, it seems. Yep. The Housing Australia Future Fund, who could oppose that, putting extra money into housing? People of Australia, I give you those that will do that. Here they are, lined up, Order. every single Order. one of them. Every single one of them. Today's behaviour has been a disgrace. Suspend two suspension motions on a day that we were brought here Order. and sent here to do government legislation, and you couldn't bear it because you don't want to get anything done. Uh, Senator Cash. Thank you very much. And uh, I also rise to support the motion moved uh, by Senator Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, now, but the question we all need to ask is why? Why is it so important that we be given an opportunity to note? what has been outlined in Senator Birmingham's motion. Well, in the first instance, the role of the government when it comes here is to justify itself to the Australian people. Now, for one hour a day, those who are not in government are given the opportunity at two o'clock until three o'clock, we've had members in the gallery today join us, to pursue what is called question time. Now, the role of question time has been one that has been here since, since the time Parliament commenced. That's right. Pretty simple concept. The mere fact you know that you clearly don't the know what the role of question time is says a lot. President, uh, during Senator question Cash, time— Please resume your seat. Senator McGrath, your interjections are so loud they are drowning out Senator Cash. Please continue. During question time, those not in government are given the opportunity to ask questions of the executive. But you see, the ministers that have been asked the question then have a responsibility to the parliament to be accountable. And what we have seen this week, in particular with Senator Farrell as the acting leader of the Australian Senate, the minister representing the Prime Minister of Australia is a complete total and utter disregard for this place, the Australian Senate. A complete, total and utter disregard 
for the Australian people. Because, quite frankly, if you don't know the answer to a question, you're actually better off just saying to us you don't know. We would actually prefer that answer than what you have done this week. To those listening in, this is the contempt with which the Leader of the Australian Senate, the Minister representing the Prime Minister, has shown. And it's not just to the Senate, because the Senate represents the Australian people. So it is the contempt that has been shown this week to the Australian people. Senator McGrath asked Senator Farrell a question. My question is to the Minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Farrell. Can the Minister name anywhere in Australia where power prices have been reduced since Labor have been in government? This is the response that Senator Farrell gave to the Australian people. I thank Senator McGrath for his question, but then he says this. I do not follow power prices closely enough to be able to answer the question. He then goes on to say this. I'm not sure that there's any person in the chamber who so closely watches power prices that they are able to get that answer. Well, Senator Farrell, I say to you, there actually are people in the chamber who follow power prices. There are people in the gallery who they know they know what the increase in their power uh, bill is. Cash. There Senator are people Cash. listening in. Senator Cash, uh, first of all, order on my right, Senator Polly. Uh, order. I have called you to be quiet. Senator Cash, uh, again, I remind you that we are discussing the suspension of standing orders. You started off well, and thank you. Point. The whole point is, it is the lack of accountability, President. The lack of accountability, and the lack of accountability shown by the minister representing the prime minister. The contempt that was shown to the Australian Order. Senate this week. Yes, it is a matter of urgency that this motion be debated. But when you also look at the substance of the motion that Senator Birmingham has moved, why? Why should we take note of this? Because it is important as the opposition to hold the government to account for broken promises. The government went to the election. It stated certain things to the Australian people. Are we saying that we should not note this fact in the chamber? Are we saying that it is not important enough for this place to actually note that prior to the election, Mr Albanese said on over 97 occasions, I will reduce your power bills by $275? And you have in the Australian Senate this week a simple question. Can you actually even say the words $275? And the minister can't even bring himself to say the words $275. So, President, I would put to you and to the Chamber, it is of great importance that this suspension motion be agreed to. It is of great importance because the contempt that was shown to this place, to the people who have joined us here in the gallery this week, but to the Australian people, quite frankly, that has been on display has been like nothing I've seen in my almost 15 years uh, thank here. Thank you, Senator Cash. Senator McKim. Well, thank you, uh, thank uh, you, just a moment, President. Senator McKim, uh, I have Senator Rustin on a point of order. Seat presidents. Oh, you've just had uh, someone from your yeah, side. Yeah, we had, had two, two from speakers. your side. Two from your side. You had two from your side. Can't play that game. Yeah. Can't uh, play that game. I'm I will seek advice from the clerk. Please resume your seat, Senators McKim and Rustin. Uh, Senator Rustin, I'll give you the call. I move that the question be put. Uh, Senator McKim. Uh, thank you, President. Well, uh, Senator McKim, I thought you were on a point of order. Oh, well, uh, Senator McKim, please well, on a point of order, then, if I might, President, I, I just remind you that there, there is a large crossbench 
in this Senate, and, and the Senate has not had the opportunity he to hear from the crossbench at all yep. in this debate. And in fact, it's, we've had two contributors from each of uh, the government and the opposition. I think the crossbench is entitled to have a say. Uh, thank you, Senator McKim. And because there were two contributors from the government, I felt uh, the fairness had to go to the opposition. But the, uh, Senator Rustin has moved that the question be put. Um, so I'm going to put the question. So the question is that the suspension uh, order motion moved by Senator Birmingham be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? Aye. I believe the noes have it. Aye. Uh, ring the, uh, division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
lock the doors. So the question is: the suspension motion is moved by Senator Birmingham be agreed to. The, uh, Senator Birmingham. Clarification, because I thought the question oh, before the chamber yes, was correct. Senator Ruston's yes. Sorry. motion yes. that the question be put. Yes. My mistake. So the question is that the motion is moved by Senator Ruston to close debate be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator O'Sullivan as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. <laughs> Order. There being 26, a bigger pardon, 25 ayes and 31 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Um, I now intend to move the suspension. No. I advise um, the Senate, uh, because we're at a hard marker, we're moving to notices. Thank you, Senators.